Welcome to the MetaWare Debugger Training. This is MDB Session 8, where we'll show how to use the profiling capabilities of the debugger to analyze an application's performance. In this session, we'll describe the different profiling capabilities of the various targets supported by MDB. Then, in the demo, we'll first show you how to profile an application at the function level to find hotspot functions followed by an explanation of how to profile in detail within a function, allowing you to find the lines and instructions consuming the most time. Finally, we'll look at ways to profile a subset of the application and also show how to create a call graph. This section will describe the profiling capabilities available with each MDB debug target. The profiling tools in the MetaWare debugger can show you how your application is performing and where delays are occurring. The granularity of the reported data varies from the function level down to individual C statements and assembly instructions. These tools allow you to uncover optimization opportunities and make configuration trade-offs with your ARC processor. The profiling information is recorded during the application's execution and stored in counters. There are several different counters that each record different data. Commonly used counters include instruction counts, cycle counts, and cache misses. The set of available counters varies with the particular target that the debugger is connected to. When debugging using the NSIM simulator, you have access to a comprehensive list of profiling counters. These provide information such as number of instructions executed, number of instructions that are using long immediate constants, number of times the function has been called, number of instructions not executed due to failed conditionals, and information on where cache misses have occurred. If you have an NSIM Pro license and are running on the ARC EM processor, you also have access to an estimate of cycle counts, which complements the instruction counts. When debugging using the XCAM Cycle Accurate Simulator, or an RTL simulation, you have access to instruction counts, 100% accurate cycle counts, and stall counts. Stalls are simply the difference between cycle counts and instruction counts. There is an option to choose either forward or backward cycle counts. In the case of forward cycles, the stalls between the two instructions are reported as coming from the second instruction, whereas with backward cycles, the stalls are reported as coming from the first instruction. In general, over an entire application run, the total number of B cycles and F cycles should be the same. When using the ARC real-time trace capability on FPGA or ASIC hardware connected via JTAG, the debugger debugger, debugger can provide profiles based on instruction counts using data from the recorded trace. On an FPGA or ASIC target connected via JTAG, the debugger can display statistical profiling data. This requires that the application be recompiled with instrumentation, which periodically samples the program counter values during execution, and after the run, the debugger can display an estimate of the percentage of time spent in each function. For the first part of the demo, we'll show how to profile the entire application. After launching a debug session, you can have immediate access to the profiling tools. However, the parts of your application that you want to profile must have executed before the debugger can display meaningful profile data. Therefore, you can either execute the program to completion or run just a portion of it. Let's start by profiling the entire application. We can press Run to run the complete application. The debugger will halt once it exits. 
The first profiling we'll do is at the function level. Open the profiling window from the display menu as follows. Select the desired counter from the address counter dropdown. For example, let's first look at instruction counts. Press the Get Profile button to display the function level instruction count data. The table displays the total instruction counts attributed to each function. The column on the far right shows the name of each function, and the leftmost column shows the percentage of the total counts associated with that function. For example, we can see that the function try has consumed about 59% of the total instructions executed. Notice that the debugger orders the list from highest percentage to lowest, so the hotspot functions are always at the top. For each function, the actual number of counts is listed in the self-count column. Thus, try consumed just over 25,000 instructions during the run. The cumulative count column shows a running total of the counts for the current function and the previous one. For example, the third row shows a cumulative count of just over 30,000. This is the sum of the self counts for the first three functions in the list. Therefore, the total instruction counts for the entire run are listed in the last row of the cumulative count column. If we scroll to the bottom, we can see that the total counts for the entire run are just over 43,000. You can also use this technique to find the counts for something like the top 10 functions or similar. This window also displays the number of times each function has been called. You can see that in the num calls column. The average counts per call is simply calculated using the self count and the number of calls. If you want to get profiling data for other counter values, let's say for example cycle counts, you can just select it from the drop down list and press get profile again to see the updated data. There is a right click menu in the profiling window that allows you to access some extra capabilities. First off, you can save the profiling results to a file using the Save to File option. This is useful for generating reports or if you want to further process the data with another tool. You can also access an Options submenu, which allows you to control some aspects of how the profiling data is generated. Also, if you uncheck Suppress Call Graph and then press Get Profile, a call graph which shows the calling relationship between each function will be generated, followed by the standard flat profile we looked at previously. This new display gives a description of each of the columns, then shows the call graph itself. This call graph gives you the following data that is not available from the flat profile a calling hierarchy between functions. In other words, the parent and the children of each function. It also shows for each function a breakdown of the instruction counts or other profiling counts between the function itself and its descendants. Compare this to the flat profile, which only shows results for the function itself. Finally, it shows the number of times a particular function is called from each of its parents. Note that this call graph uses the GNU GProf format 
and therefore there is material available online which explains call graphs in detail. However, here is a brief overview by way of an example. Let's consider the function doPrint. You can see that it has its own entry in the list. We know that this is the doPrint entry because doPrint is listed on the line with the index number and is also reverse indented. The index number is an identifier assigned to that function and is used to easily find that function throughout the call graph. 17.2 is the percentage of total time spent in DuPrint and its descendants. DuPrint itself consumes 10,025 counts and its descendants consume 16,001. Thus, the total cycle counts for printf and its descendants are the sum of these two numbers. We can also see that doPrint is called 10 times directly and 0 times recursively. The parent function of doPrint is printf. And printf is responsible for 10 of the total 10 calls to doPrint. The child functions of doPrint are listed below it. For each function, you can see the total number of times it's called and the number when called by doPrint. For example, PR file is called 19 times in total, but only 11 times from doPrint. The other eight calls to PR file are accounted for elsewhere in the call graph. Note that the descendant count for doPrint, 16001, is calculated using the data for all descendants as follows. The self count and descendant count for each of the descendants are added together and then multiplied by the ratio shown here. The sum of these results for all six descendants comes to 16,001, which matches what we see above. We'll now show how to profile portions of the application. When you request data from the profiling window, it will display the values of the counters at the current point in the execution. Counters are reset when the program starts and continue to accumulate as the program runs. Therefore, as mentioned before, when you want to profile the entire application, you should let the program run to completion before gathering profiling data. However, it's also possible to profile only portions of the application. For example, you may wish to profile a specific algorithm in your code but exclude all file I.O. operations. Or, you might wish to profile only a single function call and its dependents. As an example, let's profile the recursive function try and exclude everything else. We can put a breakpoint on the call to try and another immediately following it. You can also do this from the disassembly window. Which would allow you to exclude the function setup instructions in the current function. Now let's run to the first breakpoint. Go to the profiling window and press the clear all button. This will set all of the counters back to zero. You can confirm they are cleared by pressing Get Profile at this point. Now run your code to the second breakpoint. Then press Get Profile again. The numbers that you see here 
will reflect only the code which was executed between the two breakpoints. If you are tuning an algorithm and experimenting with different optimizations and extensions, this can be a useful feature. Now we'll show how to profile at the function level. In the previous section, we showed how to generate application-wide flat profiles and call graph-based profiles. These techniques are mainly used to find the functions consuming the most time. Once those functions are identified, you can then profile within a function to see the breakdown of counts on a source line or instruction basis. This allows you to pinpoint areas of your code that could be further optimized, for example, with ARC Apex extensions. This type of profiling data is accessed directly from the source and disassembly windows. Recall that when we ran this application before, we discovered that function try consumed the most instruction and cycle counts. Therefore, let's now look at the source for try. Now right click and select profiling from the pop-up menu. Then select the counter you want from the top half of the display. Let's start with the instruction count. Each time you select a counter, a column will appear in the source. The numbers next to each row show the number of counts attributed to that particular line of C source. We can quickly see that line 29 is responsible for a high number of counts compared to the others. You can add additional columns to the display, allowing you to visualize different data side by side. For example, it's often handled to see instruction counts and cycle counts side by side, allowing you to see where stalls are occurring. Remember though that cycle counts are not available with all simulation modes. You can do the same profiling in the disassembly window. Now you can see the counts for each assembly instruction as opposed to see statements like we saw over here in the source window. This gives further granularity about where the hotspots are and is useful when looking for optimization opportunities. Finally, you can also see a list of per statement or per instruction counts across the entire application, 